Hey everybody guy, hey everybody guys. Hey everybody guys. Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z and today we are on location at Promo Promoto Billet, uh, home of Sector 7 uh, lighted mirrors of, um, well, Lynn, you tell us. This is Lynn Hodges, uh, president and owner of Sector 7, or of Promoto Billet, sorry, the parent company of Se Sector 7. And you guys might know him better as the, the guy that makes um, these amazing uh, billet aluminum lighted mirrors that uh, only appear to be on like the best cars out there. So it's pretty awesome to see the products uh, being manufactured here at the facility. So uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy day. Uh, it's the end of the day and you've been out hustling and and building barns and sheds and going to dinner with dates and playing up. You've been you've been all around town. Been a little busy. Yeah. So um, this place is pretty cool. It's um it's quite the compound you have here. Um, and uh, I showed up today to kind of help out the the media team, create some content for you guys to promote your products. And uh, we're taking some time out of the day to uh, talk over the um, the promoter billet. Uh, the story, the story behind the brands that everybody's um, looking to buy. I mean, these these products are amazing. Everybody wants them. So, um, yeah, tell us a little about, about a little bit about yourself and where you come from and um, kind of where we're at in the country and why you love being up here in the Northwest. Okay, sounds good. So, Lynn Hodges, uh, I grew up in Ontario, Oregon, which is about thirty miles from where we are right now, and uh, I was not allowed to have a dirt bike as a kid, and that's all I ever wanted. I asked for one for birthdays, Christmas, all the time. Wasn't allowed to have a dirt bike. So, uh, fast forward a lot of years, I uh, was going to college at the University of Idaho, mechanical engineering. Oh, great. And uh, the last semester of my senior year, I was uh, in the, the machine shop, the engineering machine shop, and got to play with uh, a Bridgeport CNC milling machine. Back in that, those days, most of them were probably two axis or three axis. Yeah, it was it was a three axis. It yeah. was fancy. It was three axis, uh, and I loved it. I thought that was so cool, and I, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life at that point. I was just a senior in college, and I still didn't know what I wanted to do. But right. uh, after playing with that that milling machine, I was like, "Wow, I I gotta have one of those. It is yeah. so cool what you can build. You can build anything." So I uh, graduated from college and uh, came home, started a business with uh, my father doing automation equipment, food processing plants mainly is what we did. So the family had a food automation type business. Yeah, my, my father had been involved in uh, Orida Foods for 30 years oh, doing okay. their automation equipment. So he had been retired. I graduated and he's like, hey, let's, let's do some food processing equipment. Right. So we started doing that. And uh, in between engineering jobs, uh, I, I had bought a, a dirt bike from a friend that I went to college with. It was a, I think it was an 87 XR600. Oh, okay. And uh, it was... Quite the first bike. <laughs> quite the first bike, yeah. Yeah, and I'm loading it up and the whole time I'm thinking, I I'm probably going to flip this, sell it, <laughs> right. and get something more my size. But as I'm pushing it up into the back of the truck, he's like... Now you're not gonna you're not gonna flip this and make a bunch of money off me, are you? <laughs> I called you out. I'm like, eh, no, I wouldn't do that. So so I owned it for three or four years, but I rode it half the time and it rode me the other half. Right. It was quite the bike. It was fun. Good memories. Uh, so in between engineering jobs, I, I decided that I got tired of carrying my backpack on my back. So I built a cargo rack. Now and this is actually this is this is the cargo rack. This is the very first cargo rack I ever built. That's crazy. The very first one, and so that fit my eighty-seven XR six hundred. And I have to say, I mean, like for a first one, that's pretty impressive. Even not, for not bad. <laughs> there's some thought not that bad. went into that. I, I did make changes after that to add some some better features and uh, more comfort for your hands and all that but yeah that that's the very first rack so how did you like were you making that at the college or was it in the shop that you guys were no, working out we, of or when i uh when i started that automation business we bought uh, the cnc milling okay. machine like we had in the engineering school uh machine shop so and did you go to work on that machine or did you hire like was it just kind of like yeah. you... no I, I programmed it i learned how to run it i set it up machine with it uh, my dad machined on it as well and I did all the programming and so that's what we'd build our automation equipment with. 
And I mean, when I was back in school, we, we were in engineering classes myself and mechanical engineering and architecture. And, and uh, we went into the CNC world. Uh, we were the first high school ever to do that. And our computers couldn't even handle it. Like <laughs> the, the, the gateway 200s or 233s or whatever they had yeah. couldn't handle it. I, I can only assume that it was more of a push a thousand buttons a million times to get this thing to work. Yeah, it, it was, it was it, it's a little archaic compared to what we have now. I'll just say that, <laughs> and, and I'll say they have a pretty sweet setup out there. So we'll 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 have some footage for you guys later to take yeah, a look at. Yeah, but. we've gone from very basic three axis. Like I don't, I still have that mill that I first really bought, the very first one. I just like my. Rack. Are you one of those guys that just keeps it. everything as time yeah, goes on? <laughs> I might be, maybe. I sold that dirt bike though, and I'm, oh. I'm looking for it. I want to get it back, but uh, so yeah, we've gone from that to you know five axis fully robot loaded it, it's pretty fully cool. autonomous it's amazing what what uh what we've done and how we've gotten there it's it's neat so so it's what fun. so what happened to lynn between you know working in a food processing plant to to starting a company that makes billet aluminum accessories what what happened between there so uh like i said in between engineering jobs i built this cargo rack for my dirt bike and my wife said what are you doing i'm like I'm building a cargo rack for my dirt bike. She's like, don't you think you should be out looking for the next engineering job? <laughs> Where, where's my money? <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to build more of these. Right. Because I'm, I'm my buddies liked them. Right. They thought, hey, these are cool. And so I, I kind of felt the little prod there from my sweetheart. And so I did build more. And so I, I kind of had the dirt bike cargo rack thing going on the side, little things here and there. Uh, as we were doing the automation equipment. And, and then I, I got in Microsoft Word and started building little two inch by two inch ads and putting them in the back of Dirt Bike and Dirt Rider <laughs> magazine and you know, really high tech right. graphic artist I am. <clears throat> and uh, so that started picking up the motorcycle parts more and more and I started getting dealers and sending out flyers and uh, things to dealers to, to get more cargo rack stuff going. And uh, eventually, we got enough stuff going and we added spark arrestor end caps. Mm -hmm. And that's right when the four-stroke motocross bikes were coming out. The transition started happening. Yeah, the transition was happening. And, and I was there. I was at the right time at the right place. Uh, a friend down at Snake River Yamaha said, you know, if I owned a machine shop, I'd, I'd be building some spark arrestor end caps for these four-stroke race bikes because the whole exhaust is so expensive. Right. You could build something, have it inexpensive but high quality. You know, like, well, that's a good idea. Let me think about that for a little bit. Right. So we did that. And then another friend, uh, we, we do a lot of trail riding. Mm -hmm. And so another friend said, man, these kickstands are just terrible. You know, they, you buy a race bike, a two stroke, four stroke, whatever, but right. they don't come with the they kickstand. Uh, and so you, you had some that clamped on the swing arm. So <laughs> right. we, we spent about two months and, and, and uh, we designed a really nice kickstand. So that's how Promoto Billet got started. And from there, uh, we, got, we got a lot of dealers going. We'd go to the dealer expos. We started doing a lot more uh, magazine and you know, I don't even know when online started, but <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's been around for a little while. It's just been so around you know. a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, so it, it grew to the point where we, I just quit doing the automation stuff. Getting a little we boring. Could, it was uh, the automation world. You'd, you'd design and manufacture a machine mm -hmm. and you'd build one right. or, or two or three. We got lucky once we sold three of the same exact machine. <laughs> right. And so. And then you got to support it for however long yeah. you're using it. And, and, and the, the, the motorcycle parts was, you know, you build. 10 and you sell 10 and then build 10 more and, and right. it, once that machine was programmed and set up and it was repeatable and so it, it made a lot more sense to continue going down that road right. and it's fun right i mean i got to play with dirt you get bikes. to make things for things you like right. to do right so ironic right it was me and my dad in the automation business and i wasn't allowed to have a dirt bike as a kid <laughs> but here i am right. working with my dad building dirt bike parts yeah so, so dad's been a part of that process out. this whole time. He was, he was very involved in the beginning of it, uh, very instrumental in, in helping getting the machinery and, and just very supportive of uh, that movement. 
I, I do have to say when I was sending in my, my spark arrestor uh, forest service, you, you got to have this little guy approved, the whole thing approved through the forest service. And I, right. was, I was writing a check <laughs> to the forest service. It was like $400 or something right. to, for this approval. And, and uh, my dad was looking on my shoulder and he said, ah, you're just wasting your time and money. <laughs> and I'm like, it's my money. Right. I'm sending it anyway. <laughs> So for years, I always tease him about that, and he's always like, I'm glad you didn't listen to me. So sometimes it pays not to listen. So your Pro Moto Billet brand has grown to encapsulate a lot of different accessories for various different styles of dirt bike riders. Yes. And that includes one of your more popular products, your foot pegs. And you wouldn't think that foot pegs are a big deal, but there's a lot that you depend on for your foot pegs, as long, it, even with comfort, and yeah. longevity, and, and it, now we have snow bike riders, right? Yeah. Like, that's such a simple concept, but I mean, you've obviously proven that, um, you know, high quality and design matter when it comes to performing at the top level. And uh, so how did, how did that come about? And like, what, what process did you go through in, um, as a company to say, we're gonna invest so much tooling on designing these things and, and becoming a, a dominant player in that game? So back, back in the early days, I'd go to the Indy Dealer Expo uh, and, and meet up with other people in the industry. And one of the people that I'd met was Josh Paris, uh, and he owned Fastway. And uh, over time, we became friends. And one, one day, he called me out of the blue and just said, Lynn, I want to sell. And I want to sell to you. OK, well, let's talk. <laughs> so I ended up buying the Fastway brand in 2006 and and their specialty was the foot pegs and hand guards which fit real nicely into what we were already doing with pro moto billet with the kickstand spark arresters right and, and uh so it, it was a complimentary product so I, I ended up doing that and buying that product line and bring it in in house so from really the evolution of that was uh, it, it was kind of ironic. These pegs, yeah, it's a little similar. It's an old version. Uh, Josh Paris, with the original Fastway, was making adventure bike pegs. So they'd cut two pegs and weld them together and make They were taking two separate pegs. pegs to make one peg. Yes. And then they'd take the little stubbies and make supermoto pegs with the remnants of the other pieces. Oh, wow. So supermoto <laughs> pegs and adventure bike pegs. Right. Uh, they've chopped been up and reformed chopped into up. new products. Yep. They've been around a long time. So uh, then, oh, bad. Early, early in snow bike uh, days with two moto, I was very involved with the two moto crew. They're here from uh, the Nampa area. And it was... It was very obvious quickly that the stock pegs are not intended to be ridden in snow. I mean, snow. it's just a dirt bike. It's meant to be on dirt, not, yes. not in the slippery, icy conditions right. that a snow bike goes in. Snow, a lot of those pegs have this little V funnel underneath them. And they're really good at just packing up with snow and ice. Right. And, and you can't stand on it. It's right. terrible. So our, our pegs worked very well from, from the get-go on that. Uh, as we came out with the aluminum pegs, uh, we started doing more testing and, and trying to eliminate any buildup. And so that's why our, our foot pegs, the foot bed is designed the way it is, is so that there's very little uh, surface area, a flat surface area at the top edge. So when you stomp down, it just It can dissipates. compress and disappear. It, it goes away. And then yeah. it just falls right through. You don't have any buildup. You don't have yeah. any ice. Yep. You can flick your pegs and it'll just knock off. And these ones have like right some pretty out. extreme pegs on them where your normal pegs are like a hex head, you know, screw down type. And these ones have, you know, sharp spikes that really dig yeah. through anything that does happen to, to ice over if you've gone out all day or whatever. Yep. So, so, and I mean, look how, look how, I mean, this is, this is jewelry compared to what a stock, you know, thing would look like, right? It is. And, you know, breaking into the UTV world, you know, there's a lot of that going around where we're proud of the cars, we're proud of the culture, we're proud of what our build is, right? And we want to show off. And sometimes that includes those things that are shiny. Yep. Um, and, and so we're good at shiny. So how did you guys transform from a, a moto brand to a UTV brand? Well, it all started with snow biking. And uh, we invited Ronnie Renner 
okay. uh, freestyle motocross rider to come out and go snow biking. And so he hired a film crew and, and he came out and, and so we got to introduce Ronnie to snow biking. Well, he, he got hooked and kept coming back. And then uh, one year he, he called me and said, Lynn, we're going to St. Anthony Sand Dunes. Okay, that's not too far from here. Not too far from here, about five hours from here. And uh, you need to get a razor and come join us. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we borrowed a, a razor from Edge uh, Performance in Ontario. And so we have a borrowed razor. They threw some sand tires on it. It was a, it was a 900S. Okay. And uh, was this before the thousands or? Uh, I think, I guess no, the thousands were thousands out already. Were out, yeah. It was just, it, it, was, it was. What it was? It's a borrowed machine. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, Sounds exactly. good. I didn't know anything. I didn't buy a 30,000 machine to go for the weekend. So, yeah. so, so we get out to the, the dunes and uh, it, was, it was getting dark, but we got camp all set up and uh, Ronnie's, you know, Ronnie's like, all right, let's go. And it's dark. We're in a borrowed razor, stock headlights. <laughs> and, and if you know anything and, about stock headlights on the dunes, they're yeah. useless. And, and I've never driven on the dunes, a, a razor on the dunes. I'd ridden an ATV on the dunes before, but I'd never driven a razor on the dunes, let alone in the dark, right. trying to follow Ronnie Renner. <laughs> so Sheldon, uh, my son, he was with me as well. And we made it ah, maybe like five minutes and they were Gone. gone. <laughs> They're gone. And I'm just like, oh, this is bad. Yeah. So we end up, we turned around, we managed to make our way back to, to camp. And we're just sitting there going, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, and we uh, remembered that we had some battery operated headlamps that, mm -hmm. for bicycles. And so we went and got those little headlamps and we strapped them onto the B pillar of the, of the roll cage. And, and shining them out kind of to the sides, like little light pods, right? Those must have been impressive headlamps. <laughs> they were they're pretty good for what they were. Uh, and so Or were the nine hundred headlights just that bad? <laughs> they were bad. They were bad. So that was our first experience and, and those little battery oper operated lamps helped us a ton. We were able to have some fun and and got more comfortable with it. Well, you know, fast forward a year or two after that. And one of our, our engineers here had taken a challenge from one of our managers of write down an idea in your idea book every single day. doesn't matter if it's a good idea, bad idea, right. if you're ever going to do anything with it, just write it down. Right. Well, he came to me one day and he said, Lynn, I had an idea and I think there, there might be something here. He's like, I think we need to build side view mirrors for side by sides that have LED lights in the front and they shine out to the sides. And I was like, the light bulb came on going, remember that trip with yeah. Ronnie Renner? Instant that is exactly right. what we need to do. Let's do it, let's go. And so that's how we got into the side-by-side -side market was an experience with Ronnie Renner, driving in the dark, totally blind to one of our engineers saying, hey, I think I have an idea here. And so that's where that's where that's the mirror where came was, from. Yep, that's and then where that started. You had to have a brand around it. You built this brand. Where did the name Sector Seven come from? Uh, out of thin air, with a lot of. It thought. wasn't Sheldon playing like Black Ops or something um, that. Sheldon playing on no. Google. <laughs> we just scrolling through one night, scrolling through Google, doing everything. <laughs> so a Google search started the Sector yeah, Seven. Yeah, <laughs> and we, man, it was all kinds of names. You know, we had lists. Oh, I'm sure you probably had hundreds at some opinions point. Opinions and opinions and. So we ended up, we needed to make a choice in Sector 7. And, and one thing that I did correlate it to was, uh, you know, you look at an overhead view of the, the light output that these, these mirrors okay. yep. turn on. And it's about 7, right? 7 o'clock. About, it's over 180 gotcha. degrees. Gotcha. And so I was like, ah, Sector 7. It's that seven. works. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Sure. So <laughs> that's, that's where that came from. Now, uh, since then, you've grown into a few other products. You now have the Navigator Mirror, which is a non-lighted version. And uh, so that people that don't understand, the, the Sector 7 mirrors not only have the lights in them and now not the lights in them, but they're also a convex mirror. So they're, right. they're like twice, almost three times bigger than any other mirror I've seen on the market. And then they're convex, which means that it has a bubble shape to it. And you see, you know, two, three more times 
visibility behind you to the side of you. And yet ultimately what you're doing is you're seeing more ahead of you and behind you. Yeah. We, we can see into the future and into the past. It's a time machine. And you can see your buddy behind you. That's right. Um, and when we first when we first came out with, uh, not came out with, but our first prototypes, we actually used flat glass. Oh, okay. And I sat in that side by side and I looked and I said, no, right. we will not release this because you can't see anything right. because of the flat glass. And so then we had to go start from scratch with sourcing. Uh, that that curved glass, the convex glass, right. and, and getting that all sourced, uh, and it took us an extra six months to introduce that product line, but well it, worth it. It's right, yeah, and, and that's the way we do things. We do it right, yeah. So there's definitely you you hold a set of these mirrors, and you know that like every thought process went into these things to make them you know just exceptional above the rest, you know, and uh, and so now you've expanded out into a few other products. You got some accessory mounts. Um, you can put, I, I personally think the best fire extinguisher mount, you know, quick release mount on the market. You can literally grab the thing and pull it straight off without a second hand, which yeah. is huge. And in, in when you're in split second decision making of emergencies. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, lots of things in the, in the accessory mounts can work with whips with, you know, other different things that you're mounting to your car. Um, so it's very cool to see just the, the level of quality of these products up front and then just coming here to see the manufacturing process behind it and the, the amount of, of effort that goes to make such a high quality product is amazing and you got a great group of uh, employees behind you packing and shipping and building and engineering and all the things that go into that, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, back in the day when you were in ProMoto uh, only, you know, how many employees were you looking at? Oh, it was me, my dad, and my sister. And then the fourth employee that we got was Eddie. He was from California. That was the first non-family member. So <laughs> that was a big uh, day. Yeah, hiring someone that was, different. That was big. That was big. So uh, yeah, we've we've grown. Literally, when we started, I was answering the phones, programming machines, running machines, welding kickstand legs, <laughs> and I mean, I, I was doing it all. Right. And my dad and we were all out there, and then it just snowballed. Yeah. And today so, you, you have, uh, the ProMoto brand is kind of the parent company. Right. And then you have the Fastway brand for Moto. You have the Sector 7 uh, brand for uh, UTV accessories. And then how, how else have you branched out into other areas? Uh, we, we do have another uh, brand that we're coming out with shortly. It's okay. automotive based. And so we're excited for that one to come out. It's been sitting there on the side burner for quite a few years yeah. now. And we're, we're ready to... Get that one out there. What, as well. uh, what time frame are we looking at? Oh, what or is think, that Danny? Or is that a dangerous thing How to do? How are we doing, Danny? <laughs> we we had to put it on hold for quarter one this year, right? Uh, because of the current status of of back orders with everything, right? Uh, anything in the outdoor market, right? Is so so you guys have, have been working through the COVID year, right? This last year of of industry, and how is that? Is, is it has that impacted business in any way, up or down? Has it impacted supply chain? Like, how does that, how have you guys dealt with the last 18 months of crazy elections and COVID and all that other stuff? Crazy is exactly the right word. Uh, for the first, when, when COVID hit and, and they started shutting things down, there was six weeks where our sales tanked. I mean, right. 50% drop. Right. And uh, we were like, ooh, this is going to be it's interesting. Real. Yeah. And then, uh, boy, the floodgates opened, and I have never experienced anything or seen anything like this in our industry, and I've been in it for over 20 years, and it is crazy busy. Yeah. And it's exciting. It's neat. And there's, there's a lot of new people out there uh, experiencing the outdoors, like we've got to experience for many, many years. Right. Uh, it's just put an unbelievable amount of demand on everything from new bikes, new razors, to accessories, to, to campers, to everything. Right. And so it's been, it's exciting to see. Yeah. It's very challenging. Right. To, uh, to try to keep up with. So. So, you know, you're not like a, a million square foot warehouse scenario. This is a very tight knit group of people that work closely together to get this all done. And, you know, walking outside that, out on the compound here, you know, we got new buildings going up. We got new buildings being filled with machines. You know, you're growing and expanding, uh, but that was 
that's continually been part of the process, right? Like you've never been looking backwards and, and holding off. You've always continued to kind of add one more thing, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. We started in a little welding shop with a llama barn on the side of it. <laughs> and literally we had llamas running through the middle of our shop. <laughs> and uh, that was a fun day. And uh, so we've, we've always just been moving forward, moving forward. I always look ahead and, and just, I, I, I don't go look for the biggest, coolest, baddest facility. And we've, we found a facility that we knew would work for us for many years to come. And it'd take a lot of hard work. And uh, I'm not afraid of hard work. So we've just yes. kept moving forward and moving forward. And it, it's really been a blessing to us because we've had the, the space to expand as we've needed and uh, just put in a lot of hard work and expand and get those buildings done and taken care of and integrate them into the flow of what's next. So um, I know that as a business that creates things, right? Like you're always planning for the next thing. Is there any kind of things coming out that we can kind of sneak out there and maybe tease a little bit? Oh, we got a lot in the pipeline for the you know, side-by-side -side stuff. Uh, and unfortunately, we've had to hit pause on a lot of our new products being released because of our, our current back orders. Right, because uh, you guys are in such a hot demand from not only consumers, but dealers just wanting to do new builds, new installs, their customer bases, all starting to understand the quality and the, and the level of, of, of craftsmanship in these products that you're having to basically just keep going at every, you've added more shifts, right? You've added more people yeah. and. Yeah, we added a whole uh, second shift and uh, we have, four robotically fed machines that those things run 24 seven. And so we've added quite a bit of capacity and, and still can't keep up. Right. And so we're, we're hesitant to, well, we, but, we but just don't have that machine time to be able to add something right. else into the pipeline. When there's a mechanical the piece in the way, up. you can't just put more people in it. Right. And, uh, and it's not any small chunk of change to get a whole new machine going. No, it's not. And uh, people don't realize how much these machines cost yeah. to make these things happen. And we just finished getting one, a new one on. Right, you just added so, another machine. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know the the current situation with the the supply chain has like there ever been like an aluminum shortage that held you up or anything like that that you had to deal with. Uh, there's been times where we haven't been able to get the right stuff. Uh, raw aluminum has has been pretty steady though, fortunately. Okay. And so since we do all of our own manufacturing in-house, we're able to uh, schedule and, and get most of that taken care of. There are uh, things that we don't build, little pieces, parts, and nuts and bolts and things that uh, other people do for us that right. we don't have control over. Mm -hmm. And so we've had a few hiccups of our suppliers not being able to fulfill uh, because of COVID and, and the heat treat facility can only run at 50% capacity and I'm sorry, but your order will be six months late right. and stuff like that. So, and you know, we, I, but, but going back to the aluminum, I mean, you source your aluminum here in the States. Yes. Like you're not going to China and boating over a, a container of aluminum. No, no. You're getting we, that here locally in the Northwest. Most of our aluminum uh, comes out of uh, Utah. Utah. Yeah. So everything we do is... Made in USA, we start with made in USA product and make it all right here and package it and ship it. And so we're talking that this, you know, for the most part, this entire assembly here, minus, you know, some different source screws or whatever, you know, has been founded in the United States at the foundry, been milled here in Idaho and, and handmade in a shipping department that has then wrapped that in a box and shipped it to you. Like, yeah. It's, it's kind of amazing that that even exists these days. Yeah. So um, looking towards the future, you know, you've already got a great product set, you have high demand. You know, where do you take uh, not only Sector 7, but where do you take ProMotability and this, this group of, of dedicated employees and you know, the momentum that you have going into this already ascending industry and it's now exploding? Like, how do you approach the future? How do you look towards the future? Well, Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. Maybe we should go too. Hey, I'm all for, you know, I'm, Mars rovers. Hmm, sounds fun. Those, those rovers, you know, need a foot peg, so. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how much it would cost to get a razor to the moon or the Mars. Well, he put a, he put a Tesla up in space, so. Okay. Tesla Roadster. Yeah. Uh, the, it, it, I mean, just from, from our existing product line, uh, and 
I'm, I always look for that new thing, and it's fun. I mean, whatever we do, we're going to do it awesome. Like Danny says, we build awesome. Mm-hmm. We build awesome. So there's a lot of room to go. Um, where? Uh, there's so many choices. Right. There's so many things that we could do. Uh, we will be, we'll be coming out with a lot more side-by-side products. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a great market. It's a fun market. It's, it's hot right now. And uh, so we'll be coming out with more side-by-side products, getting into automotive products as well, and continue building uh, on, on our motorcycle stuff as well. So the future's bright. It's just how bright and which direction. <laughs> That's the exciting part. Yeah, and a lot of side-by-side owners already have dirt bikes and all that stuff, so they're probably already familiar with some the like the Fastway brand and the Promo Pro Moto Billet brand, and and it's a, it's awesome to see that level of craftsmanship make its way to the UTV market when we're so used to seeing China imports and plastic housings and you know um, soft metal being used and and things like that. So uh, hats off to to your team for making such amazing products and and all of that. And thank uh, you. It's it's encouraging to to me as a as a enthusiast in the industry, to know that there are companies in the United States working hard to put out quality products that are going to one look awesome, but last the abuse that we put them through. These are all torture tested. These are all oh, abused yeah. day in day out. Um, I've seen these mirrors get crushed on sand hollow rocks and then get pushed right back out and continue working. Right, like. Um, you know, there's no mirrors in the market, in this example, that, that even come close. And uh, it's, it's, it's a proud statement to say that American Made still exists. And uh, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't say that your team, say enough about the team and the, and the product and the, and the business that you're building here. I think it's great. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day and your wife letting you come into the shack and come take a, take a minute with me. So I appreciate it. Thanks no for coming on. And, Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming out. And helping us out with some content yeah. and giving us a chance to tell our story. <laughs> so you can find uh, Sector 7 at their website, sector7.zone, uh, not .com, .zone. Uh, you can find Pro Moto Billet and Fastway, fastway.zone, um, and you can find them on their social media pages, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that. And uh, look forward to some new uh, hot content from these guys, uh, working with them to, to get some new stuff out into the market. And um, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys in the next show. Peace.